In today's video, we will talk about how to create stack bar charts and also 100% stack bar charts. So let's get started. We would be using these four packages. So if you haven't got them installed, you can go and install it from packages. So let's use a built-in data set, which is called NTG. And I just want to show it to you. So it has some data about cars, manufacturer, model, etc. And see this uh, data actually comes from ggplot2. So if you haven't got the ggplot2 installed, you won't have access to MPG. So once you install ggplot2, you would have access to um, MPG. You can simply type MPG as well. Um, you don't really have to um, put the ggplot and colon colon in the front. But just for the sake of uh, explanation, I've actually put ggplot in front of that. Okay, so a very simple plot we would be using the manufacturer. So you can see that there are a number of cars and each car is uh, listed as one single row and then there's so many Audis and then so many other cars. So we can simply use that count. So if I say ggplot x equals manufacturer and in the next line I'll just use the geom bar to plot the geom bar and say stat or the statistics which I want to plot is the count. So it's actually going to count each row and see how many Audis, how many Toyotas, etc. And then finally we print this plot. And if I run these three lines together, we should have a basic bar chart, which is simply counting the number of rows which are Audis and number of cars which are like Ford and so on. So that's a very simple ggplot chart. And if I wanted to put another command in there, so I'm just repeating the same thing again. All I'm doing is just adding this line there or this um, text there, fill equals class. So this is the class field. And let's see what it does for a chart we can see that the colors have changed based on the class. So based on the class, we have different colors. For example, Audi comes in two different classes, Chevrolet comes in three, and so on. And it's now counting the Audis, which are mid-size, and the Audis, which are compact, and so on. And this is a normal stack chart. But if you wanted to make it as a as a hundred percent stack chart, we can do that as well. So you would notice that each bar would be of the same height, and it represent the hundred percent instead of the count. We should get the percentage there. So only thing in addition I'm putting is the position equals fill. So just that would make. And for the time being, I'm just going to remove this. So. If you notice the difference from the first and the third, we have actually put fill equals class. And the moment we put fill and fill equals class, we have different colors coming up for, uh, or different fill colors coming up for each element, which is the class, which is this. And when we say position equals fill in the geom bar, you would notice that we have a 100% stack bar chart. So it's now representing the proportion not the actual quantity. So it's just representing, so maybe the, the green or the mid-sized cars within Audi uh, is 20% of the whole. But notice that uh, instead of the actual percentage symbols, we're just getting 1.5, etc. To make that slightly better, I am putting this command there. So I'm saying scale y continuous and labels should be scales percentage. So I'm using the scales package and that's how I get that. And instead of typing scales, I could have simply typed it like this as well. But for the sake of simplicity and for explanation, better explanation, I'm just gonna put that in there. So run it and we can see that now it's making more sense. We have percentage coming up as well along with the percentage symbol as well. So it's looking good now. Now let's start putting some more um, 
text into this or more commands into this. For example, I'm going to use a theme and I'm using the theme economist, which comes from GG themes package from this package. And I'm saying that the theme X uh, axis title, this one has to be rotated 90% because I can't really see it very clearly uh, this way. And at the top, I'm putting a title and the subtitle, etc. And I don't really need this two times because I also have it here. So if I run the whole thing, you get a proper formatted chart which has the text rotated 90% and the title, subtitle, and the labels have been changed as well. And a little caption appears at the bottom as well. Now let's do another thing. What if we wanted to put some more information in the in the in the chart? For example, the labels there. So let's start. Let me remind you about the MPG data again. So this is what it is: manufacturer model. And I'm going to make a data set out of that, or a data frame out of that, by using this dplyr style command so I'm using the mpg which is this and then I'm grouping it by manufacturer and then I'm grouping it by class and then asking the dplyr to give us the count and apart from getting the count I'm also asking dplyr to give me another column which is called percentage which is going to be the n and the sum of n within that group so let me run this and this is what we get. So we get just three columns, which is manufacturer, class, and N, or the frequency. How many compact cars within Audi? There are 15 of them. How many mid-sized cars in Audi? There are three of them. And what is the percentage of that within the Audi car? It is 83%, and this is 16%. So using that little data set, or data frame, I'm going to run this chart again. And in this case, I'm going to refer data as this data frame. And manufacturer, X is manufacturer, which is this, and Y equals N, which is the this integer, which is the frequency. And then again, I'm filling it by class and saying Jomba stat is identity. When we say stat equals identity, it's going to use whatever you have given it to the Y axis there. So in this case, it's going to show N there. OK, let's run this chart first. So this is, again, the similar chart which we produced. But instead of using the actual built-in data set MPG, here we just use MPG, and then we said stat equals count. We have actually transformed this um, MPG into another uh, data set called DT, which has the grouping of manufacturer class and the frequency of the, of the data in that. Um, and then saying statical's identity. Now, let me introduce this line in there. And in this line, we are saying that we want to produce the geometrical text as well. And the text is going to be the percentage, the column percentage which we calculated here. And then we just want to format it with the, with the, with the percentage sign. Um, and uh, the format is percentage and then um, this is the, the symbol which is going to be put after that. And position equals position stack and V justification equals 0 0.5. This is very important because you would see what it does. So if I run this, suddenly you would notice that bang in the middle, you have the, the symbols coming up. So it's much more clearer chart now because we can actually see this is 16.7% and this is 83.23% and so on. And the position is very, very um, good because this is right in the middle, and that's what we wanted. So the trick is this. And if I remove it, just to show. Now it's not centered, so it's, it's just kind of, you can see that it's not really making any sense now. So if I bring back that 
thing where I'm saying that the justification and the vertical direction is 0 0.5 is doing the trick for us. So, so far so good. Now let's do another thing, putting more information in there. So this we have already seen and in this case I'm saying, okay, let, let me get this out. So I'm using another theme called theme minimal now. And again, the very familiar labs or the labels, title, subtitle, caption, etc., which we used earlier also. So if I run everything together, now we have 100% stack bar chart with title, subtitle, etc., everything customized. And now if I wanted to have the same chart rotated in the other direction, There we go. And you can still see that the, the chart has been rotated, but the symbols or the percentage uh, values are still intact and they're right bang in the middle of each column um, or, or of the um, bar charts. So I hope you found this information useful. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.